The world is fading into darkness. The chaos is nothing new. It's been here since the beginning of time, and the history of all the bloodshed can be traced back to the war in heaven. When the angels revolted against God and fell from grace, they caused war, and they were thrown out of heaven. When the angels fell to the earth, they corrupted the earth. They spread false religions, they spread sorcery, they mated with the women, and they created giants and various other abominations that appeared in various forms and caused them to give sacrifices to demons as gods. This here is a biblical, historical account of the fallen angels and their transgressions against God's creation. As told to us in Genesis chapter 6, which reads, And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days and also after that, when the sons of God came unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Now we can go into a more detailed look of Genesis chapter 6 by looking at the book of Enoch and the book of Jasher. Let's start with the book of Enoch, chapter 7. And it happened, after the sons of men had multiplied in those days, that daughters were born to them, elegant and beautiful. And when the angels, the sons of heaven, beheld them, they became enamored of them, saying to each other, Come, let us select for ourselves wives from the progeny of men, and let us beget children. Then their leader Samyaza said to them, I fear that you may perhaps be indisposed to the performance of this enterprise, and that I alone shall suffer for so grievous a crime. But they answered him and said, We all swear, and bind ourselves by mutual execrations, that we will not change our intention, but execute our projected undertaking. Then they swore all together, and all bound themselves by mutual execrations. Their whole number was two hundred who descended upon Ardis, which is the top of Mount Armon. That mountain therefore was called Armon, because they had sworn upon it, and bound themselves by mutual execrations. Verse 9 contains the names of the chiefs of the fallen angels. I cannot pronounce most of those. Therefore, I'll let you guys pause it and read them for yourselves. Continuing on with verse 10. Then they took wives, each choosing for himself whom they began to approach and whom they cohabited, teaching them sorcery, incarnations, and the dividing of roots and trees. And the women conceiving brought forth giants, whose stature was each three hundred cubits. These devoured all which the labor of men produced until it became impossible to feed them when they turned themselves against men in order to devour them and began to injure birds, beasts, reptiles, and fish to eat their flesh and one after another and drink their blood. Then the earth reproved the unrighteous. Let's go more into detail on the fallen angels and how they are the cause of our last global 
cataclysm, which is the flood of Noah, and how this all ties into the story of Adam and Eve, and how the world will once again experience a global cataclysm. Let's open the book of Jasher, chapter 4. And all the days that Enoch lived upon the earth were 365 years. And when Enoch had ascended into heaven, all the kings of the earth rose and took Methuselah, his son, and anointed him. And they caused him to reign over them in the place of his father. And Methuselah acted uprightly in the sight of God, as his father Enoch had taught him. And he likewise, during the whole of his life, taught the sons of men wisdom, knowledge, and the fear of God. And he did not turn from the good way either to the right or to the left. But in the latter days of Methuselah, the sons of men turned from the Lord. They corrupted the earth. They robbed and plundered each other. And they rebelled against God. And they transgressed and they corrupted their ways. And would not hearken to the voice of Methuselah, but rebelled against him. And the Lord was exceedingly wroth against them. And the Lord continued to destroy the seed in those days, so that there was neither sowing nor reaping in the earth. For when they sowed, the ground in order that they might obtain food for their support. Behold, thorns and thistles were produced, which they did not sow. And still the sons of men did not turn from their evil ways, and their hands were still extended to do evil in the sight of God. And they provoked the Lord with their evil ways, and the Lord was very wroth and repented that he had made man. And he thought to destroy and annihilate them, and he did so. In those days when Lamech, the son of Methuselah, was 160 years old, Seth, the son of Adam, died. And all the days that Seth lived were 912 years, and he died. And Lamech was 180 years old when he took Ashmua, the daughter of Elisha, the son of Enoch, his uncle, and she conceived. And at that time, the sons of men sowed the ground, and a little food was produced. Yet the sons of men did not turn from their evil ways, and they trespassed and rebelled against God. And the wife of Lamech conceived and bare him a son at that time, at the revolution of the year. And Methuselah called his name Noah, saying the earth was in his days at rest and free from corruption. And Lamech, his father, called his name Menachem, saying, This one shall comfort us in our works and miserable toil in the earth, which God had cursed. And the child grew up and was weaned, and he went in the ways of his father, Methuselah, perfect and upright with God. And all the sons of men departed from the ways of the Lord in those days as they multiplied upon the face of the earth with sons and daughters and they taught one another their evil practices and they continued sinning against the Lord. And every man made unto himself a god and they robbed and plundered every man his neighbor as well as his relative and they corrupted the earth and the earth was filled with violence and their judges and rulers went to the daughters of men and took their wives by force from their husbands according to their choice and the sons of men in those days took from the cattle of the earth beasts of the field fowls of the air, and taught the mixtures of animal of one species with another, in order therewith to provoke the Lord. And God saw the whole earth, and it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted its way upon earth, all men and all animals. And the Lord said, I will blot out man that I created from the face of the earth. Yeah, from man to the birds of the air, together with cattle and beasts that are in the field. For I repent that I made them. And all men who walked in the ways of the Lord died in those days before the Lord brought the evil upon man, which he had declared. For this was from the Lord, that they should not see the evil which the Lord spoke of concerning the sons of men. And Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord chose him and his children to raise up seed from them upon the face of the whole earth. 
Continuing on from the war in heaven to the war on earth. In the book of Enoch, chapter 19, which reads, Uriel said to me, Here will stand the angels who have joined themselves with women. Their spirits appeared in various forms and defiled mankind by leading them astray into sacrificing to demons as gods. They will remain here until the day of great judgment when they will be judged and made an end of. The fallen angels' wives will be with them. Their offsprings became the giants of legend, the beast of mythology, and the great men of renown throughout history. The book of Enoch tells us each of the two hundred chose a wife for himself, and they began to go in unto them and mate with them. And they taught them sorcery and enchantments and the cutting of roots and made them acquainted with plants. These women became pregnant and gave birth to great giants whose height reached up to three thousand Elves. The giants consumed all the food, and when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. They also began to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish, and to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood. Then the earth laid accusation against the lawless ones. Azazel taught men to make swords, knives, shields, and armor from the metals of the earth. He taught the women how to see behind them, how to make bracelets, ornaments, and other kinds of jewelry using precious stones. And the beautifying of the eyes with makeup of various colors, this led them astray into fornication and ungodliness, and they became corrupt in all their ways. Semyaza taught enchantments and root cuttings. Amaros taught how to resolve enchantments. Barakel taught astrology. Kokabel taught constellations. Tamil taught knowledge of the clouds. Arasdel taught the courses of the moon. As mankind began to perish, they cried out, to heaven. Then Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Uriel looked down from heaven and saw all the blood shed upon the earth by the extreme lawlessness. They said to one another, The earth is laid waste, and the voice of all the dead cries up to the gate of heaven. The souls of men cry out to the holy ones of heaven, saying, Bring our cause before the Most High. They said to the Lord, the King, Lord of lords, God of gods, and King of all kings, the throne of your glory endures throughout all the ages. Your name is holy, glorious, and blessed unto all the ages. You have made all things, you have power over all things, and you see all things. Nothing is hidden from you. You see what Azazel has done, teaching unrighteousness on the earth and revealing the eternal secrets concealed in heaven. Semyaza and those he has authority over have taught sorcery and they have defiled themselves by sleeping with the daughters of men and have revealed to those women these kinds of sins. These women have begotten giants and by their children the whole earth has been filled with blood and unrighteousness. Now the souls of the dead are crying out to the gates of heaven because of the lawlessness which has taken place on the earth. You know all things before they come to pass. You allow this, but have not told us what we should do to the giants who are destroying your creation. Then the Most High, the Great and Holy One, said to Uriel, Go to the son of Lamech and tell him, In my name, Hide thyself, reveal to him the judgment that is approaching, that all life will be destroyed by a flood of water that will cover the entire earth. Instruct him how he may escape and his seed may be preserved throughout all the generations of the world. The Lord said to Raphael, Bind Azazel hand and foot and cast him into the darkness. Make an opening in the desert which is in Dudael and bind him there and place upon him rough and jagged rocks and cover him with darkness and let him abide there forever and cover his face that he may not see light and on the day of the great judgment he will be cast into the fire and heal the earth which the angels have corrupted, and proclaim the healing of the earth, that I will heal it, so that not all the children of men perish through all the secret things that the watchers have disclosed and have taught their sons. The whole earth has been corrupted through the works that were taught by Azazel, so ascribe all these sins to him. Enoch went and said, 
Azazel, you will not have peace. A severe sentence has gone forth against you, and he will put you in bonds. Your actions will not be tolerated, nor will mercy be granted to you. Because of your oppression and all the abuse, godlessness, and sin which you have taught to men, then I went and spoke to them all together, and they were all afraid and seized with fear and trembling. They asked me to petition the Lord for them for forgiveness, because from this point on, they could not speak with the Lord, nor lift their eyes toward heaven, ashamed on the account of the shame of their sins for which they were condemned. So I did as they asked, and took their petition in regard to their individual deeds forgiveness and peace. And I went off and sat down at the waters of Dan in the land of Dan, which is south of the land west of Mount Hermon. I then fell asleep and dreamed about their chastisement and heard a voice instructing me to tell it to the sons of heaven and reprimand them. And when I awoke, I came unto them and they were all sitting gathered together weeping in Abisail, which is between Lebanon and Senesia with their faces covered. I recounted before them the dream, and I spoke words of righteousness and reprimanded the fallen watchers. This is the record of the words of righteousness and of the reprimand of the eternal watchers. I was commanded to give by the Holy Great One in that vision. I will now relate what I saw in my dream with my tongue of flesh and with the breath of my mouth that you may understand with your whole heart just as he created man with the power of understanding the word of wisdom. He has created me and given me power to reprimand the watchers, the children of heaven. I wrote out your petition, but in my vision, I saw that your petition will not be granted unto you throughout all the days of eternity. Your judgment is final. The decree is, from this point on, you will be bound on the earth throughout all the days of the world. You will not be able to re-enter heaven. But before you are bound, you will see all your loved ones destroyed. You will not be able to possess them. You will only be able to watch them fall by the sword. Your petition on their behalf or for yourselves will not be granted, even though you weep and pray. This I have written. I want to end this video with the Our Father prayer. Jesus says, when we pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think they shall be heard for their much speaking. Therefore, when we pray, we are to pray the Our Father prayer, which goes, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.